we do face extraordinary challenges. You've heard of many of them uh, in your discussions today. You know the nature of these challenges from your work. Uh, growing economic inequality, a changing climate, terrorism, mass migration, still too much extreme poverty, still too many girls who are denied an education, the rise of nationalism and xenophobia, and a, po uh, a politics that says it's not we but us and them, a politics that threatens to turn good people away from the kind of collective action that has always driven human progress. So these are real challenges, and we can't sugarcoat them. They're going to take a long time to solve. But that can't discourage any of us from the belief that individually and collectively, we can make a difference. We can make things better. And rather than be daunted by those challenges, those challenges should inspire us and excite us, because it gives us an opportunity to make our mark on the world in, in ways that uh, we haven't even yet scratched the surface of. We have to reject the notion that we're suddenly gripped by forces that we cannot control. We've got to embrace the longer and more optimistic view of history and the part that we play in it. And if you are skeptical of such optimism, uh, I will say something that may sound controversial. Uh, I used to say this to my staff in the White House, young interns who would come in, uh, any group of young people that I met with, and that is that by just about every measure, America is better and the world is better than it was 50 years ago, 30 years ago, or even 10 years ago. 